Ever wished you could connect with every subscriber at just the right moment? MailerLite's email automation lets you do just that. And today, we're exploring how. Now, email automation isn't just about sending emails. It's about building relationships automatically. Think of it like dominoes. You align them based on each subscriber's needs. And then with a gentle push, they all fall into place. Now, what's this automation? It's understanding your audience's behavior and responding automatically. Did they sign up for your newsletter? Send a welcome email. Add a product to the cart without buying? A follow-up email with a special offer might just seal the deal. And now, let's create this magic with MailerLite by setting up a workflow, a series of emails linked to specific triggers, subscriber actions, or events. For setting up our automation, let's use the example where you're promoting a writing course. Let's start from your dashboard and click on Automation in the left navigation, then click on New Automation. You've got the option to start from scratch or choose a template. MailerLite has many templates to choose from, and you can browse them by category if you click the drop-down menu. These are great if you want a quick way to set up an otherwise complex automation, or if you're just getting started and want to see behind the scenes of how they work. For this tutorial, we'll start from scratch and walk through the steps to set up a four email workflow. Give your automation a name. Keep in mind, you'll need to create each email that you intend to include in this workflow if you haven't already. We've done that for this tutorial, but if you want help creating email templates, check out the video in the description below. You'll see the block Setup Workflow Trigger at the top. Before we move forward, let's go over items on the workflow window here. Your workflow trigger is the starting point that will signal the start of your automation. For example, when someone joins a group, completes a form, or subscribes to your newsletter, clicks a link, updates a field, the anniversary of a date like a birthday, or when an exact or specific date is reached, an action would be what happens after a trigger, like when someone signs up for a newsletter and then they automatically receive a welcome email. MailerLite also has e-commerce triggers, the main difference being that these will initiate via specific e-commerce shop behaviors, like when making a purchase or adding a product to a cart. If you want to learn more about e-commerce triggers specifically, check out the video link below. You can configure up to three triggers in MailerLite, allowing various entry points into a single automation workflow. For example, if you're promoting newsletter signups, both filling out a form and clicking on a specific link could be set as triggers. Either action will initiate the same automated response, like sending a welcome email, streamlining your efforts to engage with subscribers. For a deeper dive on using multiple triggers, check out the video linked in the description. Below the triggers, you'll see a couple of checkboxes. Allow subscribers to repeat the workflow, which will enable a trigger to be activated once every 24 hours, and activate e-commerce tracking for this workflow. Checking this will allow you to track sales generated from the various emails that are sent from within the workflow. Very useful for seeing the effectiveness of your emails and workflow as a whole. Keep in mind that this setting will only display if you have your MailerLite account connected to WooCommerce, Shopify, PrestaShop, or BigCommerce. To start creating your automation workflow, move to the trigger dropdown on the right sidebar and select the trigger that starts this flow. We'll have this flow start when a subscriber joins a group. This is useful when subscribers select their interest groups when signing up for your newsletter or when they fill out a survey in an email. Select the groups that you want to use for this flow and hit save. Now hit the plus button. You'll see several options come up for the next step, including email, delay, condition, action, and A-B testing. You'd use an A-B test in an automation when you want to test two versions of the same workflow to see which works better. If you select A-B split, the following actions will be limited to email and delay. But for this tutorial, we're going to keep it simple and select email. This is going to be the first email that goes out to those in the flow. In our case, for those who showed interest in the writing course. On the right sidebar, you'll notice the options are similar to setting up an email campaign. Give the campaign a name and enter your email subject. Feel free to use the AI subject line generator to help. And design your email. We've created a template for each email in this four email sequence. You can do the same or create each email as you design the flow and save as a template for later. Since we've created these beforehand, we don't need to change the design and can hit done editing. Back at the automation setup, select the second block, hit save, and then hit the plus button. Add a delay, set it to two days. This is important because it gives your subscribers time to actually view the email. This ensures that the subscribers have enough time to fulfill the condition or conditions required before the next step. The delay step is the most commonly used automation step after the email step, and an important part of any automation that contains more than one email. It allows you to add breaks before or between steps. 
For example, if you have three emails in your workflow and you want them each to be sent one week apart, you would add a delay step of one week between each email step. Now, set a condition. When you click on the Define Condition block, you'll see options appear on the right sidebar. This is how you create a condition. Before we go forward, a condition here is an action or the lack of an action performed by the subscriber that decides the next step in your automation. For example, if someone does or does not open the first email in this workflow, in the condition block, select the first dropdown and select Workflow Activity. A second dropdown will appear, and that's where you can select the first email. Then you get to your condition. We'll go with Was Opened. When you set a condition, you'll be presented with two directions the flow can go toward, a green check side and a red X side. On the X side, we want to tell the workflow what to do if someone does not open the email within the two-day delay period. Conversely, on the check side, we want to tell it what to do if someone does open the email within the delay period. And this is important because if we don't add the delay step before this condition, then it would activate immediately once the subscriber gets the email. On the check side, we'll add another email. Now on the X side, select Email, and we'll fill in the info for email 1, but type Resend at the end in the name field. We want to give these subscribers another opportunity to open our emails. If, however, they don't complete that action in the step, then we'll want to consider moving them to another group outside of this workflow. After the email, we'll add another delay, followed by a second condition step. This condition step is for our resent email and should mirror the steps from the first email in our workflow. Only here, after you select Workflow Activity, select Writing Course Email 1, Resend. Then, like before, select Was Opened, and then Save. On the green check side, we want to move those who open the email onto the side with the Writing Course Email 2 step. Hit Action, move to another step, select Email, and then select Writing Course Email 2. On the X side, select Action, Move to Group, select the group they were in, and move to Monthly Newsletter. This way, since they didn't open it, we can go ahead and move them to a different group and tailor our messaging to something more aligned with their interests. We'll repeat this process with the remaining emails, moving those who don't open the next one to the Monthly Newsletter, and moving those who do to the next step. At the end, you want to include a call to action that includes a payoff of some kind for their attention, whether it's a course discount, an ebook, or something like that. And this isn't a one size fits all process. MailerLite offers you a canvas where you can paint the perfect picture for each subscriber. With up to 100 if then steps in an automation, you can get as creative and complex as you like. And the process is made much quicker when you save your emails as a template. And if you want to start the automation with steps already laid out, you can check out how to use automation templates in the video below. When you activate your automation, you'll be able to access the statistics through the Overview button in the Automations dashboard. To learn more about how to use this data to optimize your subscribers' experience, check out this video on the Automation Overview. But remember, automation is not about replacing human connection. It's about enhancing it. It allows you to be there for your subscribers at every step of their journey without spreading yourself too thin. So. If you're ready to take your email marketing to exciting new heights, give MailerLite's email automation feature a try. Thanks for watching. And if you want to explore more email marketing goodness, don't hesitate to smash that like button and subscribe. Until next time, happy automating.